Welcome to ACC Network Extra. College soccer comes to you from Cary, North Carolina, Wake Med Soccer Park. How about number 11, Virginia Cavaliers, and the number 7, Florida State Seminoles, set to meet in semifinal number 2 of this ACC Soccer Championship. A look at the bracket, and North Carolina did enough to knock off Clemson, a 65th minute goal. They're through to the championship Sunday at noon on ESPNU. Who joins them? That's the question we answer over the next 90 minutes. And with that, we say hello, everybody, and welcome. Joined by Cat Whitehill, former ACC and NCAA champion Mike Watts on hand. These two teams saw each other just two weeks ago at Clockner Stadium, and finally Florida State <laughs> won there. There's not a lot of secrets left between these sides. <laughs> there really isn't, and they both play similar style of play. They like to keep the ball on the ground. It's going to be a little bit of a slower game than we saw in the first one, but it's going to be exciting nonetheless. These are te technically and tactically very gifted teams. Yeah, for Florida State, again, they're very good, and they've got a great goal scorer in Dana Castellanos, who can change a game all by her lonesome. She really can, and she's one of the best players in the country, and if not the world, she was nominated for FIFA World Player of the Year just last year. And she is just a, a, a very gifted, creative player in the midfield, but she's also tactically very gifted. And she's a coach's dream in there because she can see the game so well. 19 goals scored last year for Florida State. A little downtick this year but overall still very threatening. Meanwhile, on the other side, UVA. Again, very good, very possession-oriented, and a team in the ACC that's in the upper half of the conference. Sydney Zandi, however, provides something that's unique compared to everybody else. Well, Coach Steve Swanson called her one of the best midfielders in the ACC, and that's going against Castellanos, and that's going to be the battle to look out for today. She's going to have to be critical and big time for this team, and whoever wins the midfield for Virginia today will most likely be the victor because they are both so strong in the heart of their team. Let's take a look at starting lineups for this matchup of two of the top teams in the nation meeting in the ACC semifinal. Bollinger is in net, and McFarland is up front a 4-3-3 for Mark Krikorian. Yeah, and look for Zhao in the midfield. She just got ACC Freshman Player of the Year, and what an exciting creative player from China. And you don't really expect that too much uh, coming to Florida State, but what a gift she's been given to, to Mark Krikorian. In Florida State. A state ride down there, Mark. Goodness, the rain is pouring down <laughs> four times the ACC Coach of the Year in his 13th season at the helm of the Knolls. On the other side, Steve Swanson, a 400 game winner with a 4 3 3 starting lineup. Yeah, and it's all about that midfield, and Torres there in the midfield. She's an all-ACC player. She's extremely creative, and she's going to have to connect a lot with McCool, Spanson, and Jarrett in that front three. They're going to need to get wide as much as possible because the best way to beat a, this tough Florida State defense is to get around them and use that width as much as possible. And there is Steve Swanson. He was uh, pretty humble about all of it. He said, I'm still about 400 wins away from Anson Dorrance, but he is across the 400 plateau. Very few can make that claim. He thanked the people that at Dartmouth and Stanford and on to Virginia, the players that helped him reach that point. Semi-final number two. How can you not be excited for this matchup? It was a two-goal win for Florida State in Charlottesville 12 days ago, and the rematch happens with a spot in the ACC final on the line. As the offside flag was up, nothing doing here for UVA at the outset. This is going to be an interesting surface to play on, but the keys for Virginia, for them, they need to communicate a lot. When to press, when to hold. They need to be smart because the Florida State defense can pick you apart, or offense can pick you apart so easily. And they also needed to disrupt the FSU rhythm because of how good they are in that attack, in their possession. Can they force turnovers quickly and get into transition as much as, as, much as possible? Series history, UVA still a pretty sturdy lead, but Florida State has closed the gap of late. Cavaliers a 3-2-2 two two record in the ACC tournament against Florida State. Florida State bit of pressure here. And the key for Florida State actually is they need to possess, but possess smart. It's not necessarily they have to out-possess Virginia. They just need to know where they want to possess. They want to possess higher up the field and not just co collect a lot of passes and they're out in their back four. But they really want to penetrate this U uh, University of Virginia defense. 
All the way back to Bollinger, who drives it away. 12 wins, four losses, couple draws this year for her. Caroline Jeffers has made one start as well. Pavlisko who came into the starting lineup as a bit of a surprise, to be frank, for Florida State. Has really impressed at left back, the freshman who's now started 18, coming in 19, including tonight. Lynch. Close down. Gabby Carl. Drives this off the crossbar. That got deflected by the defender, McLaren. And it'll be a goal kick in the end. Scary times, and Ivory got enough to poke that off the crossbar. Well, it could have been another big mistake for Virginia in the back because that's how Florida State scored their first goal in the last time they played together with Ivory with the mistake. But this time, Ivory with the big time save. Just a little clip, forces the ball high, so it hits the crossbar. Florida State very unlucky not to get a goal out of that one, but well played from Ivory, making up for a big mistake to give up the first goal for Florida State when they were in Charlottesville. That's got to be one of those oopsie moments as a center back, right? <laughs> Where you're kind of going, did I do that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I mean, this weather causes that too. Like you, you normally when you have that technique, you're going for the ball and uh, Typically, when there's no rain, you're going to hit it properly. But with this rain, it's so much slicker, and you have to really get everything behind the ball, your whole body, just to make sure you properly clear it. Yeah, the rain is still pouring down. It's not as bad as it was at the <laughs> end of the North Carolina game against Clemson. Well, it kind of started it's just now tapering off, because at the beginning of the kickoff, both coaches looked pretty miserable. <laughs> I was very glad to be nice and dry under, under here got some old pupils in from from Boston that, that you've let under our canopy <laughs> I mean that's that's kind of you yeah yeah I like to keep them dry if I can you know right <laughs> all the way to Bollinger drives it into the stands yeah they're more used to snow than rain so <laughs> those are people just trying to hang out next to it's a good time for concessions not so much for fans actually yeah. enjoying the game is this thrown in by Taryn Torres and out? Well, it's good that they're staying around because these are two very, very high quality teams. Some of the best in the country. Uh, and it's always fun when they play each other just because they are so similar and it's created quite the rivalry. Mark Krikorian saying the last game a bit of a one off and then you reevaluate things, but they weren't planning to change a whole lot. You, you don't really know what they're going to do. He sort of indicated there's even within the lack of secrets of playing a top 10 team every single year. There's still an element of unknown that, that comes at the start of these games. Yeah, well, it's a little bit of a, a different style of play from Virginia. They are pressing a little bit higher uh, defensively. So far today, they're not actually pressing as much. They're, they're putting a lot more behind the ball, but just keep an eye on that middle of the field. There are so many numbers in the middle of the pitch, and if you can quickly change the point of attack, and find those open spaces on the outside for both teams. Getting around this defense because their defense, their back four are so close together. That's where you're going to find a lot of success. Powell poked it through. This will come to Zhao, the freshman out of Shanghai, China. Tillman. Tillman will watch this run out. Has won a corner for the Seminoles. We've outshot opposition this year by a paltry 344 to 97. It's a team that again is among the upper echelon in Division I, but a 5-4-1 record in the ACC. It's this very young Florida State team as a seven seed, even though they're ranked seventh in the country coming into the game. Here's Zhao, what an impressive year and the culmination of years of recruiting for Florida State. This ball struck across just out of the reach of Gabby Carl. And it brought him back to his WUSA days when he was a coach of the Philadelphia Charge. And he knew uh, different players like Soon Wen, who's one of the greatest uh, players from China ever. And then Gao Hong um, kind of gave them, 
texted or called, I guess you could have to get more call from China, but Coach Krikorian and, and told him about this special player. And wow, she is just shine. Freshman player of the year here in the ACC. And she was a special player as well at the U20 World Cup this summer. Lynch. Lynch trying to create just a little more space. Taryn Torres has recovered. Is it out by Spanstra? Zhao. Castellanos. Lynch reaching the byline, sliding it in front. This will be another corner for Florida State, who've come out on the front foot in these opening seven plus minutes. You know, they, they really have, and it's because Virginia can't get a hold of the ball, and when they do, they give it away too quickly. They have to regain possession, Florida. calm Florida down. Number 10, you know, in the first Dana 10 Castellanos. minutes, you always want to see what your team's going to be about, and right now it's really all about Florida State and, and their, their rhythm. Ivory's numbers on the year. Service gets by the penalty spot. Wika. Wika to the near post. Bit of a worm burner there. And with about eight minutes gone. Florida State shot by number 14, Natalia. I love what Coach Kikorian said about Quika. She has the mentality of a champion. And uh, she's a special player, has been for this team for a long time from Finland and just done an incredible job as a leader in the back. All ACC again. And, uh, when you when you have a coach say that about you, that's to me one of the highest praise you can have because it, you know, mentality. That's the difference from getting to the next level. Last trip, and there's Zoe Morse who is with the U.S. U20 World Cup team. Four players on that United States U20 World Cup team over the summer. This team just now beginning to find themselves, Virginia. When you pass as much as they do, finding space and understanding one another does take some time. Well, it's the same for Florida State. They've really only had about five or six games as a full team because of so many players getting full team call-ups uh, with Euros, CONCACAF. You have U20s coming in later. Uh, and they, Coach Kikorian feels like they're playing their best soccer and same with Coach Swanson. Jarrett the grain and off of Torres. I mean, you've, you've gone in and out of teams because of international duty and you play a little further back, but obviously you're still trying to find a way to work with your center back partner, or try and, and work in the middle of the field is you see the numbers on Brooke Bollinger this year, 10 solo shutouts and only behind Leshnack from North Carolina for goal against average. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because the season is short. And so, you know, when you're coming in and out of play and you want to get that rhythm, especially, you know, center back partners or midfield and, and forwards trying to get, you know, so they can read and anticipate each other's run, runs, it's difficult. But these coaches are so used to it and these teams are so used to it that it's just secondary to them now when players are coming in and out. Zandy got caught up. Jalen Howell commits the foul. And a dangerous spot here for Virginia. Yeah, and Zandy has the ball, and, and yeah, Hal absolutely gets a piece of Zandy. And Hal is one of those freshmen that has been superb, one of the best recruits Mark Recorian's ever had, but gets caught clipping Zandy on that one. Bollinger shouting one way and the other. Step over from Torres and driven by Sutton. Come out toward Rebecca Jarrett. Let's it roll out. Well, Lizzie Siraki headed over toward the sideline. Courtney Peterson, the starting left back, injured. And Siraki, the one making her seventh start this year, taking that role. This ball struck across. Bollinger will dive down on it. That's easy work for the Florida State goalkeeper. Now you're starting to get a feel that Virginia is starting Virginia to grow into down the down game down. a little bit. They've slowed the pace down a bit. Uh, they're finding pockets of spaces for their forwards and their midfielders to 
midfielders to get into and uh, they're connecting more passes and that's what you want to see now that the first 10 minutes of momentum is gone now you calm yourself down and you find that rhythm that you want for the rest of the game Jarrett, back heel, have Lisko and a throw for UVA. UVA eight wins in the ACC season. All three of their losses came in the ACC. Part of what was a dominant year, the Atlantic Coast Conference in non-conference play. We'll talk about it a bit at halftime, but the numbers are borderline gaudy. Slide sends the referee <laughs> diving. <laughs> that was a good ma maneuver there from the ref to get out of the way. Well, and then, then the fans don't really care for what he says after. That's David Urbacher. Someone give that guy a scholarship. <laughs> Mark Krikorian doesn't seem to feel that was the right, right decision. Well, I don't think he really saw what happened. So he saw some players on the ground, and so was he. So figured there had to be a foul somewhere. Turned over in UVA during the attacking third. Morris, this is neat out. Virginia this year, 48 goals scored. It's most in the ACC, second in Division One. A lot of that is because of Megan McCool. And one thing that Coach Steve Swanson talked about was they really focused in the spring on their technique and getting in and around the final third, their crosses being better, their runs being smarter, and it's really paid off. Randy Waldrum's got some work to do at Pitt to get back to this. Uh, Elite round of the ACC tournament, but the other three are all there. This ball is hammered up and over from Montana Sutton. Very competitive, does all the little things, then we were told, scores some big goals too. <laughs> nearly, nearly. Yeah, that's a good opportunity for her there. Virginia shot by number 21, Montana Sutton. Bollinger brings it away for Florida State. Howell will usher this out. McFarland who's playing that center forward with Castellanos behind and a couple players flanking on either side. Trying to hold up for a moment. Roll back to Quica. Westrup actually a great water polo player too, tossing this in, which would have been really helpful 25 minutes ago when the field was inundated. The ball's still a little slick, so she's got a good grip, you know, for that water polo days. Seminoles in reverse. More than 15 minutes in, semifinal number two from Cary, North Carolina in Salem Stadium at Wake Met Soccer Park. Zhao, is this the first really good look for Florida State in this game? Laid back, Castellanos! Deflected on the way, and that looked earmarked for the upper 90. Instead, it'll curl out of play for a corner. Oh, and what brilliant play there from Florida State. Zhao making an offsetting run from the midfield. They find her from the back. 
And even if she does get a foul to here, she slips Tillman in, and Tillman good, sees the field so well and decides to play it back, but Virginia just barely gets a piece of that and puts it out for the corner kick. But Castellanos, what an opportunity for her making that delayed run in the box. Ripped in, Zhao. Here's Zhao again. Maybe her brightest day came against UCLA, a goal and two assists back in September. Anson Dorrance from North Carolina referred to uh, Florida State win there as beating UCLA like a drum. <laughs> well, they did, and UCLA is one of the top teams, you know, in the country when having some of the top players and at the point that they played them and just to for them to have UCLA come down and beat them that way, that had to give them a lot of confidence for the season. Al Castellanos. Zhao stepping into space. Pocket closes and Howell. And it's so impressive to me that when Virginia was really regaining a lot of the possession and finding the ball more, it was because Castellanos wasn't on the ball a lot. She wasn't getting the touches in the space that she wanted. Well, now Florida State has more control, and it's because Castellanos is finding the ball. Virginia has to be aware of her movement along with Zhao because they connect so well in there and they make such good runs. So they have to put pressure on them immediately. That's sort of the story with Castellanos. It, there's an intellect to it. It's not just your run of the mill creative player that sees what's within five yards. It's someone who sees the whole field and in film session, it's almost another coach. Yeah, and you just want that from your player where every time Coach Gregorian asks a question, she always has the right answer. And, you know, she changes the point so quick. And she's, you know, I was watching her, especially in this in the first Virginia game. Um, that's really where Virginia struggled was when Castellanos would be able to turn and find the open pockets of space on the outside, whether that be Lynch or Tillman or McFarland if she's making a run through. It was just, it was impressive to watch. We spoke a bit about how gummed up the midfield can be. Is that the impediment to a player like Castellanos when things get too too full in that area of the field? How gummed up? Is that what you said? Sure. I, I, I didn't <laughs> it's gummed up. Gummed up. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what that means, how gummed up that is. So. Okie dokie. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, it, maybe the midfield needs WD-40. Okay, I don't know. There you go. Why, why are you making this? <laughs> no, I just didn't know what it meant. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's what you need. You need her to kind of be able to well, the, the oil to help you... Uh, Fine tune that attack. How's that? Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I, that must be a Midwest <laughs> thing, or I, I just never heard it. I don't know. Turns out I'm <laughs> chock full of these colloquialisms. <laughs> Look at this run moving forward. McCool slid out. That's good defending for Berkeley, a first time center back. Virginia's not done yet. Contact, edge of the area. It is just outside the 18. It is a free kick, not a penalty for Virginia. She's a fun player. When she has the ball at her feet, she's so good in the 1v1 and just eat, you know, makes that cut. And, and that's close there from, from Carl, whether that was a foul or not. But I think the referee had to call it because the arm was outstretched a bit. And it was the right call. That was just outside the penalty area. So free kick here for Virginia. Have you ever stepped in gum? Yeah, I just yeah, you kind of can't get your foot off the ground, you know? <laughs> I just didn't okay. know that was a phrase. <laughs> Especially about soccer, gummed up, you know? <laughs> I don't, you know. <laughs> Pat Ding, Quika out. I'm not saying it's a wrong statement, Gumbo. Okay. I'm just saying I just did not get it at the moment. How's yeah. that? Okay. Just because I don't get it doesn't mean it's right or wrong. <laughs> I think Twitter thinks it's wrong. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> I, th I, th I think they're on your side. <laughs> Typically, they are. Ooh. Ooh. Sliding into the bench. That's one where uh, you got to keep your head up. Oh, I love those kind of tackles, though. If you both get up, it feels so good. Yeah, but what about the coach? Is that the oh, athletic yeah. trainer? Yeah, I don't, yeah. Feel bad for him. Yeah. 
Yeah, these are one that you just both hit the contact with the ball at the same time, and yeah, the coach might be the trainer, but he, he seems all right. He was smiling. Additional hazard pay in the check next week. <laughs> Bumped into the Florida State half. Florida State in the ACC tournament again. All 24 years of the program. This their 14th semifinal. Most of it all coming under Coach Krikorian. Swanson's side pushing forward. This is curled off frame. The Spanter's not uh, afraid to take a shot there. and It's a good idea. She's seen a little bit more bend on that. Kind of catches... Bollinger a little bit off guard, considering she probably was waiting for a cross or maybe a pass, so it's a good idea. And the Kerners come on. Virginia. Sumter. Your pardon, Hal. Hal on it here, native of Colorado. Had played seven years in the NFL and at Colorado State. This is turned over in the back line. And Virginia charging forward. And this ball shot just away. And you mentioned it, Spanster's not afraid to shoot from anywhere. Has a knack. For scoring pretty remarkable goals. Yeah, she does. She also has a knack for assisting, and she was looking for McCool on that play, but McCool just wasn't able to free herself. But nobody comes to pressure Spancher from Florida State. It just arrives way too late. It's a good effort, just missing right off the post on that one. But with this slick field, you want to keep those shots low, see if they can bounce right before they hit the goalkeeper, hit the frame, because a lot of times it might slip through the fingers or you might get a deflection. There's a foul here. Saves Florida State's back line some blushes. Anna Patton caught maybe a bit flat-footed. Megan McCool making a run. Won't we'll find the corner. Tina Lynch is the target. And he goes down. You know, it's funny. This referee is it's just ruining the, rhythm, ruining the rhythm of the game. He's calling just every little thing. And, you know, I understand that was probably a foul, but it's just been so choppy right now with the set pieces because it's just, you know, minor hip checks or whatever. You can just play on. And it's just a, it's just a bit uh, too much for me right now. Does feel like a pretty solid difference from the first game where it seemed like Clemson and North Carolina were more or less allowed to, to, to reign free. Yeah. It's a physical game, let them play, you know, unless it's obvious. And that was what was nice. It kept the game going and it allowed, you know, players to be more physical and made the game more fun to watch because it wasn't disrupted too much, but it was still in control. Pushing in. A leading ball that'll run too far for Tillman. And Virginia goes to their bench for three. Florida State to their bench. Bring on one substitute inside the 20 minute mark of the first half. Substitution for Florida State in the ring. Number 11, Coriano Villalobos. Villalobos. Placing number 33, Yu Zhao, get a seat. Virginia entering number six, Anna Sumter, replacing number 20, Sydney Zandi. Also entering number 25, Melissa Gorzak, replacing number 17, Rebecca Carroll. It's up by Kerner. Kerner waits and pulls the trigger to Spanstra. Spanstra, low ball. 
The flex down, header knocked forward again by Sumter. Just come into the game. And that's where Virginia can see a lot of success, Virginia getting around the defense, dribbling or penetrating, run towards the FSU defense, and then making a run out wide and forcing either a defender to come to you or to hold. And that time, FSU decided to hold, and it was a great opportunity there for Virginia. Clarendon, who uh, probably gave up the biggest uh, early concerning effort, Florida State off a deflection. If that had, this will end up running out. Yeah, now with Jarrett coming out of the game, Spantra comes from the left to the right, and Dvorak will be on the left for Virginia. Virginia. So number three, it'll be Megan interesting Collins. now to see Replacing number 10. how Pavlisko deals with Spantra. It's a little, diff a little bit of a different look. and. A little higher pr pressure. Jarrett seems to, to hold back a little bit more on the, the defensive pressure while Spantra is just going to try and make you, two, force you into some unforced errors. Slide in and Ayana Du. Taken back by Florida State. Jalen Howell, who's grown in terms of her sophistication drastically over the last three months. She was already an excellent player. She's just a quick learner and really worked hard in the video sessions and on the field, working overtime. There she is, Howell. I mean, we talk about all the great American players that have come through, and Mark Krikorian's putting some pretty big <laughs> praise on, on Howell. Said one of the best recruits he's ever gotten, ever. Service to cross, that'll get out on its lonesome. And he's had U.S. national team players on his team. He's had so many international players. I, mean, I, can't, I can't even count the countries he's had that he's brought into this program that have played at the international stage in World Cups. And Howell is that player that he points to. It's one of one of his best, and that's, that is very, very high praise. I was looking through some of the old draft picks in the NWSL. Obviously, you know, Williams and Hahn and Pickett was a top five pick. Grubka, Fields, Coleman, Weiss, the goalkeeper, McCarty in the earlier days of the league. Casey Short still around. Florida State has been pumping talent into the NWSL for its entire existence. Not to mention their coordinating producer for all the digital games is Sharni Yerke, a Florida State alum. So it's a small world. Very small. It, it doesn't mean they get more favorable coverage. <laughs> it, it just, it, it seems to feel that way sometimes. <laughs> well, K Casey Short, currently not just NWSL, but full team player. Mm -hmm. Good turn, and McCool had that deflected away. I mean, I could name a pretty pretty expansive list for Virginia as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Morgan Bryan being one of them. Yeah, Sonnet. Yep. But you get into this, and all of a sudden, you know you're leaving people out who <laughs> yeah. deserve to be on the list, right? Right. If, if I asked someone to name all the great North Carolina Tar Heels, eventually someone would yeah. forget you. Wow. Yeah, it, there, it's a long list. Cutting, There's just a lot to do. I'm not cutting too deep. deep. Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thought we were friends. <laughs> Kerner. <laughs> With under uh, 15 minutes to go in the first half. Don't forget you. It'd just be. <laughs> Overlooked. Yes, for the moment. <laughs> oh, I'm easily forgotten. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Back up the field. By Virginia, and here comes uh, comes Berkeley. Sliced ahead, looking for Dorsey. And I could actually hear Coach Krikorian all the way over here saying, "Keep it." It's gotten a little bit choppy now. No team is really with all these substitutes that have come in. There hasn't really been in either team that has regained that rhythm. 
goes a little in favor of Florida State right now because they finally are just putting a foot on the ball and relaxing and just being a little bit more patient rather than forcing the ball up the middle. Howell, Tillman keeps it moving forward. Lynch, Lynch, and it's caught by Ivory. And Connolly's in the game for Florida State, and Tillman now is on the left side, Connolly on the right. And Connolly, what a what a story for her freshman year. She was National Freshman Player of the Year, all ACC, and now is coming off the bench for them. And Coach Krikorian talked so highly of her as well and, and how she's adjusted to a different role but still playing a, a big-time role for this team. And, you know, it, it's difficult to go from starter to bench player, but if you can have a leader still coming off your bench and – you know, helping your team out in that way, that's that's massive. I mean, that's just a silly amount of talent to have available to come in 20 minutes into a game. And she's uh, pressuring here defensively, number three, in Florida State. Takes it away and plays it ahead. Dorsey leaving it off via Lobos. Door was closed. Powell. There's Connolly. That was excellent defending there from Virginia. It was a 1v1 situation in a pretty critical spot there for Florida State, but so many players so quickly behind the ball and it forced Florida State back. And that's a victory if you're a defender. That's from Serpica, replacing number 24, Alexis Spanstrom. Also Winnery, number 26, Loretta Sardin. Serpica's come in. Number 22, Megan McCool. Substitution for Florida State. State here we go. Number 15, Olivia Magal. Replacing number four, Christina Lynch. Tillman for Connolly. The overlaps arrived. Ahead of Brandon. Patton's got some run in this game. Howell. I will say this. We, we heard in particular from Coach Krikorian, although I think Coach Swanson Felt pretty similar. I just hope that the rain isn't too much. I hope Mother Nature cooperates because the, the level of play between these two, the style of play, the, the technical ability, this was a chance to showcase the ACC at its absolute best. And it's been a little bit of a chess match. You can feel this thing beginning to come together. Yeah, well, it's, it's tough when both teams want to possess. And so one team has the rhythm, the other team is chasing, and then when you finally get the ball back, you're kind of tired. So it takes a lot out of you. So it's key for both these teams that as soon as they get the ball, they take a collective breath, put their foot on it, just have a little patience, because when you see the ball getting more direct, that's mainly out of frustration, because these teams are so good in possession. And the key is, to, as soon as you win the ball back, just slow it down just a little bit, unless the transition is obviously on. Go back into your style of play and really start to build again. Tillman. Burgau's making a run with her hand up just off screen left. And this will run too far for Connolly. Connolly also played some Gaelic football out of Cork in Ireland. Irish national teamer that actually debuted with the full national team against the United States about two, three years ago. Not only the rookie of the year, the second out of Florida State back in 2015. So 
Karepka. Oh, there's a little room here for Siraki. Return out wide, just in front of the corner flag. Sarepka in a stalemate. That's a corner. Yeah, well done there from Sir Sarecki and Pavlisko. Just trying to get out of there and just didn't know what to do and had to give up the corner kick. Corner kick, Virginia, number two, Bethany Brent. Betsy Brandon, five goals, three assists, half her appearances off the bench. Came off the bench today, Brandon. McLaren. Corner over the top. Well, you heard a bit of an eruption from the crowd a moment ago. There's Gorzak plays back. Looks like Florida State was issued a yellow card to the bench. I think it was mainly Coach Krikorian. I think he's just been, I've been hearing him yell a lot. I think the referee just got a little frustrated. Just gave him a warning. He's a little bit more quiet now. <laughs> yeah. 13 seasons. Unbelievable. He's gone to eight college cups. I had to check that again. Like, it, you know, we, we spoke with every coach along the way this week about is this the most competitive the ACC's ever been. And he's the only one that said, really, it's easier to judge that after the fact. Because he goes, I think nine or 10 are gonna get in, but I wanna know, can we get eight in the Sweet 16 again? Can we see three in College Cup in Cary in December? Th those are the questions that may define that answer. Yeah, I was interested with, with that statement, but it's true because there have been years where, you know, there was three, even though Stanford won it all, there was three ACC teams in the College Cup. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's just, you know, that just says a lot for the conference and so many teams could get in this year. Some, some coaches have even said possibly 11, but I think they're now down on that because Notre Dame didn't get above the, the 500 line. But, uh, you know, that just shows you that Notre Dame, you know, beats quality teams that weren't in conference during the year, but yet they don't get above 500 because the ACC is so hard. So it's, it, you know, it's hard to say in that kind of situation, but it will probably play on the NCAA and we'll see if it is one of the best years for the ACC. Yeah, I think it was the Duke coaching staff that was saying to us last week when we had them on ESPNU, hey, if Notre Dame gets above 500, I'm not counting them out to make it in. Yeah, because their, their schedule was so tough. They had such a, a good RPI. It just, they weren't able to, to get to the point to qualify themselves. Yeah, Notre Dame's out. Florida will not make it out of the SEC this year for the first time in 15 seasons. Becky Burley's team need to win out in the tournament in the SEC to get through and fell to Arkansas. LSU is the other side of that final, if you can believe it. It's crazy. Oh, good speed pushing forward and played through by Tillman. Interior touch, everybody slides down and it's kicked away from Dorsey. You know, and it, Coach Krikorian talked about Tillman being one of those underrated underappreciated not by him but by a lot of people in the ACC kind of player and she's just been all over the field today and gave that ball in a Dorsey just good defending from Virginia to deal with that and not allow for really any big time shot attempt yeah said with Zhao and Castellanos it almost flies under the radar to him. Yeah. she's been excellent in this game she's been right side left side now she's in the middle just all over the field and has really helped them have Lisco, Bergal. Well, there's Tillman, the senior out of Texas, playing in her 86th game. Oh, that's going to be a throw. You know, it's been interesting. This game has gone in waves where Florida State's dominated the possession, Virginia's dominated the possession, and then back and forth. And I'm not surprised by that at all, to be honest. But it's going to be now, you know, the final third. There, besides a couple of shots from Virginia, you know, and a really good effort from Florida State that just got deflected at the last minute from Virginia. You know, there hasn't been a whole lot of excellent goal-scoring opportunities to go. It's going to be like, who will have that? 
goal scoring mentality that is going to win this game. Off of Tillman who bowls into Brandon. Sort of the thing we heard from, from these coaches, you know, no matter who you play, they're going to get at least one chance, no matter how well you play. Florida State lost in the regular season finale to, to Miami and dropped down to number seven. I mean, nobody saw that coming. But they outshot them 25 to one. When I asked Coach Kikori, I was like, are you playing your best soccer regarding the result at Miami? He goes, well, we actually played really good soccer against Miami. They, they just got their one opportunity and they scored it and we didn't. And so he does feel like they're playing their best mainly too because of uh, they finally got together as a group and they're, they're fit and they're healthy and they're all back together from international play. Coming up, the interview at halftime you don't want to miss, the ACC finalist head coach from North Carolina, Anson Dorrance. I, I know you tried your hand at coaching a little bit at high school last year. I don't know what lessons yeah. you took from Anson. So I'm gonna ask him on air and put him under pressure and ask if I could be on his coaching staff. <laughs> I, he has no problem saying no to anybody. Virginia pushing into the final third and into the six yard box. This will come out and it's gonna be a UVA corner in about the final three minutes of the first half. Corner kick, Virginia, number two, Betsy Brandon. It's Alyssa Gorzak. Short corner. Two. That will come all the way through, and it's kicked into the net. Zoe Morse. Giant rebound from Bollinger. Somehow, a seeing eye ball all the way into her palm, and the rebound is in. Virginia leads. Well, it's kind of funny. I heard someone from the Virginia bench say, hit it. And what a great ball in, and they, this was an obvious planned play. Just bringing in the player at the last minute, and Adu, and she just, this is why these slick services are so difficult to deal with, and more, she's standing all alone. No Florida State player is watching her because they were hoping that Bollinger was gonna make the save, and it just deflects right onto her foot, and what a great opportunity for the captain of this Virginia team to, to get a, a goal right before the half. First of the year, third of her career, and Morse for the Cavaliers as Virginia in front in this ACC semifinal. Virginia Cavaliers goal scored by number 11, Zoe Morse. With the assist from number 19, the assist Anna to Adu. Her ninth career assist. Well, unfortunately, because that corner kick worked so well, they may not never be able to use that again because people are going to be ready because Florida State was not ready for a dude to come in from such a delayed run. But we had a great decision from the Virginia coaching staff. Shifting Berkeley just out of the reach of Villalobos. Well, this sets up for a pretty entertaining second half. Let's not forget Florida State won at Charlottesville against UVA 12 days ago. One minute. One minute. He plays out of pressure. Under a minute to go in the first half. Dorsey on the run. Dorsey's going to win the race. Dorsey, the cutback, lays it off and pushing on where Via Lobos into Ivory. And the frustration from Connolly, even though Villa Lobos had a great opportunity to shoot, but Connolly was wide open to her right. Villa Lobos, as you can see, look, Connolly was waiting for that ball and it just a little slip. And Connolly could have had a very easy opportunity in front of the net. It's hard though, if you're Villa Lobos, you gotta take that, but Connolly was very 
adamant that she wanted that ball as well because of how wide open she was. Florida State Seven. went over 20 Five. minutes in this half Eight. without a shot. Seven. And then they come up with that right at the final horn. one nothing to UVA at the end of the first half. And one really great opportunity, a little bit of ingenuity, and it's the Cavaliers on top. Yeah, no, like you said, it was all about the waves, and both teams Virginia had Cavaliers their opportunities, and no team Seminole. really no. just outright dominated in possession or dominated this game. So to get a set piece goal kind of you know, sums up how the game was. And Florida State, they just didn't convert on their opportunities because they had a, a few of them, especially that last one in the final seconds where they should could have easily finished that. Well, the two teams actually have to come off toward us and toward the microphone, as opposed to the first game where both teams went off to the other side of, of the stadium. There are four dressing rooms here, in part because they play international friendlies and tournaments here with some form of regularity. Virginia, 1-0 lead here, the number 11 team in the country. The number three seed in the ACC tournament. And a goal from Zoe Morse, unlikely hero for the Cavaliers at Wake Med Soccer Park with a long way to go. Another look at the goal. This came just minutes before halftime. Well, an excellent decision to keep it low because with that heavy traffic, it's hard for Bollinger to find the ball quick enough and just wasn't able to get a strong enough wrist on that and just deflects it right to Morris. You can see the excitement in her face. You got to love watching a center back get a goal like that. Oh, I think we're about to have the meeting of the minds. Mark Krikorian is standing about 20 feet away from Coach Swanson from Virginia. I think they're both deflecting to each other. He's got to go on <laughs> the <center> first. <laughs> Yeah, Mark or Corey will walk a little further away. They're going to have a conversation there, the Florida State staff, and leave Virginia to handle the questions at halftime. So the brain trust assembles from Florida State, but it's Virginia with a 1-0 lead at halftime. And the head coach, Steve Swanson, in his 18th year at the helm of UVA, joins us now. Coach, that goal seemed like you guys had that plan from the get-go on the corner, no? Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work quite the way we wanted it to, but it, uh, well, it did in one sense, but uh, it was uh, not how we drew it up, but it was, it was, the, the end result was what we wanted. Well, it seems like this is going right on script with the possession, but in waves where one team has more and one team has the other. What, how can you adjust to really overwhelm in possession? Well, to be fair, I, I thought they controlled a lot of that game, you know, I mean, I, I think uh, we were turning the ball over, uh, unnecessarily and they're putting some pressure on us but at the end of the day we, we got to solve that you know that's that's probably the biggest key to the game right now we, we didn't we didn't get them working back in their end as, as much as I would have liked and uh, you know but credit them they, they pressured us hard and and it, once they get it you know it's hard to get it back from them and so they, they made us work but I thought our defending was pretty good you know at the, at the end there it was a little bit hairy but Overall, our organized defending was pretty good. Coach, thanks for the time and good luck in the second half. Thank you. Steve Swanson joining us from the field as Zoe Morse. All right, maybe this wasn't entirely the plan, but the scoreline is exactly where Virginia wants it. 43rd minute, UVA with the lead. Anson Dorrance coming up next. Welcome back to ACC Network Extra. The Florida State fans are on their heels a little bit. They trail 1-0 to Virginia. At halftime in game two of our doubleheader semifinal Friday in the ACC. As we welcome you back to the booth, joined by a couple of Tar Heels, Cat Whitehill, Anson Dorrance. Anson Dorrance and the Tar Heels are through to the final on Sunday. Congratulations on the win, Coach. What do you make of the performance? Well, I thought first half we played very well. And, of course, uh, the nature of the game is uh, uh, sometimes it doesn't matter how well you play. You just can't put the ball in the back of the net. And I think uh, coming into halftime, we didn't really know what to say because there wasn't that much criticism except we just couldn't get anything on frame or in the back of the net. Uh, second half, we actually didn't play as well as we did in the first half, but we got the goal thanks to a, a great uh, move on the flank by Rachel Jones. Then, of course, a door were just fighting our way through the, the middle of the, the Clemson defense to push it in from close range. So uh, um, I'm excited. It's great to be in the final again, uh, and it's uh, great to see uh, uh, us playing a, a deep roster, uh, especially in light of the fact that we've got three starters out with 
Russo, of course, uh, and Jonesy, actually, she came back today a bit as our starting left wick, and then Fox with the U.S. full team. But I'm very happy to be in the ACC final. Well, that was one thing that when Heather Riley was interviewed earlier was the, the depth of this team. And, you know, what is the difference? Because it seems like even when you did sub players in, it was, not, it was as if you didn't skip a beat in your rhythm. Well, I think we do something differently than a lot of teams. In the old days, I think we suffered a lot of criticism because we do believe in playing a deep roster. But our philosophy, I think, is different than a lot of coaches. If we recruit you, we're going to play you. The only requirement is that you have to defend. So even if you're the center forward, you've got to defend. And uh, all the kids that we're defending uh, have a chance to play. Uh, and as you know, it makes a big difference if everyone on the team is defending. And if you look at some of the uh, uh, data from this year's team, this is a very good defensive team. Of course, we don't know where the goals are coming from, but uh, I think we're, we're very good at uh, uh, making it hard for the other team to score. How about some highlights? Let's take a look back at what happened in the first game of our semifinal here on ACC Network Extra. Andrew Jeske had a really strong game, especially in the air. She really did. And you know what? She's a fabulous athlete. And uh, our new starter out of left wing uh, has been serving her. And of course, that's uh, Rachel Jones uh, serving Rachel Dorward for the goal. And Rachel uh, Jones was the starter left wing, but uh, I thought Maddie Schultz had a great first half serving Bridget. And of course, here's a cracker. I remember this part was in my throat. Thank goodness it pinged off the bar. But that is a well struck ball. And of course that uh, could have uh, leveled it up. Yeah. Well, it kept Lesnack's uh, <laughs> uh, 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 shutout streak alive with all the yeah, minutes. Yeah. Minute up well, to now? You know what's amazing is it's hard at this juncture for anyone to break any records at Carolina. She broke a record <laughs> for scoreless minutes. Uh, it's unbelievable in the age of parity for her to have so many scoreless minutes. So we're very proud of her. And of course, uh, all the kids that defend for us yeah. as well. We were trying to do the math as to where the minutes were, <laughs> but we, we didn't fin figure it out. So I don't know if you know the minutes now. But it was complex, yeah, but okay. it's, it's up there. But <laughs> okay, for her right. to have this scoreless streak, uh, obviously yeah. we're very proud of her. Great. Kat, this is practically the free square. You get to ask whatever know, you want. I know, I know, I do. Okay, well, so you're looking at this game in Florida State, and Virginia. You face, you know these teams so well. You know what? You know, is there anyone that you would prefer to play over the other? Well, we've already played FSU, and as FSU is discovering, one of the hardest things to do is to beat a team twice. Yeah. So, uh, you know, FSU is obviously the, the challenge for them is to beat a team that's wonderfully motivated because you know when you lose against a team, your motivation is through the roof. So. That's a big challenge for FSU right now. Uh, honestly, uh, it's pick your poison. Uh, these are two outstanding teams. Um, we're not going to try to select one to play in the final because we think they're both outstanding. But obviously, we're ecstatic to be in the final. <laughs> so for me, that's satisfying enough right now. Coach, appreciate the time. You should try TV sometime. Yeah. <laughs> what he's going to, his, <laughs> nice tip. his daughter's having twins. So Yeah, my, uh, yeah. I have my yeah. butt to be a, yeah. uh, a grandfather again. I've yeah. got two twins <laughs> coming uh, tonight or tomorrow. So uh, I'm, I'm in a great mood right now. Yeah, no kidding. Coach, thanks for the time. We are at halftime here between the Florida State and the University of Virginia. And the Cavaliers have the lead. We'll show you how it happened when we come back. If you want the most, you gotta take the wheel. If you want the power, you gotta take the wheel. If you want the most, you gotta take the wheel. If you want it all, you gotta take the wheel. Lights are shining in Cary, North Carolina tonight as it's semifinal Friday, Sunday. It's going to be North Carolina and one of these teams. Virginia is ahead at halftime. Back with Cat Whitehill and Mike Watts. Cat, I'm not sure if you ever got one of those big awards, you know, at the end of the season. Got a couple. But there are some, uh, <laughs> some major award winners, individual yeah. award winners in the ACC. Yeah, and, you know, you're looking at Zhao tonight playing a, a nice game so far, but she's just been a specimen for 
Marker Corian and the Florida State team and just getting freshman of the year. But the, the real disappointing one is Offensive Player of the Year for Alicia Russo. And has, she broke her leg uh, a couple of games ago. But, you know, it's it the, all those players deserve the award. And, and, and Anson Dorrance deserves the Coach of the Year as he went undefeated in the ACC. And it's tough to do it because all these teams are so impressive. As you see, Zhao there is going to be back on the field for Florida State. Mere moments. Virginia's got a 1-0 lead. Do the Seminoles get back? Or is Virginia going to the final? Nissan Titan, backed by America's best truck warranty, which covers more than any other truck in its class. Inside and out, bumper to bumper. Now's the time to save with exclusive offers like this. ACC semifinal is at halftime between the University of Virginia and Florida State University. It's the Cavaliers with a 1-0 advantage in Cary, North Carolina, and the head coach, of the Seminoles, Mark Krikorian joins us from the sideline. Coach, what was the message at halftime to your team? Well, I think that uh, by and large we played okay. Uh, we had a couple of really good looks at their goal, and I think we have to be a little more clinical in front of the goal. But um, that's a very good team that we're playing against, and uh, they created and scored a nice goal. Well, I saw you when you were meeting with the coaches right before you were going into the locker room. You were looking at something specific on the video. Do you see an adjustment that your team needs to make to, to – keep possession even more? No, I think that uh, there are a couple of different elements. Uh, you know, certainly uh, wanting to be a possession team as we try, um, you know, sometimes that can work against you a little bit. Sometimes a direct ball will uh, will help us a little bit as well. And uh, you know, we have some pace in some different areas that uh, I think that we need to have a little bit more varied attack. Sometimes uh, nice and slow and deliberate. Other times, uh, let's put the ball forward and uh, use a little bit of pace. Coach, it's a long walk to the bench. Head on over. Thank right, you. Thank you. Yes. Mark Krikorian joining us. As Zhao and Florida State try and overcome the deficit. As Virginia the lead highlights from the first half after this. Like a smart thing. What's the weather? Sunny. Perfect chicken eating weather. How'd you get in here? It's time for chicken. Ugh. What's the traffic like? Rerouting you to chicken. Okay. Hey, Calzo, order pizza. Ordering chicken. No, pizza. Chicken. Okay, chicken it is. Chick-fil-A nuggets make dinner delightful. Now that's smart. Halftime and carry Virginia 1-0 lead over Florida State with Cal Whitehill, Mike Watts. Let's take a look at how we got here. And Virginia and Florida State meeting in the second of two semifinals and nearly a disaster at the outset. Uh, McLaren is very grateful for that crossbar and for Ivory. And what a brilliant save there. Just getting a little tip and crossbar helps out with a, a poor clearance on a slick surface. And then here, Zhao. Some brilliant touching and dealing with a slide tackle like that. But what I like the most about this ball is Tillman could have easily played it across, but finds Castellanos, but an excellent deflection from Virginia. And then Virginia going the other way. Minutes later, opportunity at the top of the box. Your eyes went maybe handball. Yeah, maybe close. handball. It's close. Her, her arms were pretty close to her body, so it might not be a PK, but that was close. And yet again, Virginia's defense making game or goal-saving tackles because they, Florida State has been close. But this was the goal from a deal where I guess it wasn't part of the plan, but it worked out really well it was, as it was deflected right to Morris on that back post. And just a little skip ball like that in that traffic, it's difficult for any goalkeeper to hold on to it, but Bollinger didn't get an, enough of a, of a strong wrist and hands and deflected enough, and Morris was able to finish on the backside. 
over Virginia with a 1-0 lead at halftime. Cat, if you're UVA, you get that goal, call it fluky or, or whatever you want off the set piece if it's not exactly what they were trying to do. Uh, what do you do now? If FSU had a decent amount of the ball for a large segment of that half. Surely you want to try and nurse this thing to the finish line. Well, you heard Coach Swanson as he was walking off that they were giving the ball away too easily. And a lot of that is because when you do finally win the ball back, you're tired. And so the key for them is when they win the ball back, just put your foot on it. Take a breath and be patient again. And you build up because that's, for, that's the Virginia style as well. And Florida State um, did a nice job of forcing un, some unforced errors from Virginia with their possession and winning it, ball, winning it back quickly. But now Virginia, now that they have the one goal lead, they, they can be patient. They can hold the ball and they don't have to force anything. It's Ivory from the back. Lived in Argentina first three years. Her life most starts the most recent U-20 cycle for the U.S. national team. Jarrett won't get to this. Jarrett now. A nutmeg to Torres. And those were two players from Virginia right there. McCool and Torres that just didn't touch the ball nearly enough for them to be successful in the attack. Spancher was a dangerous player on the outside. But Torres is, is a extremely creative midfielder and she just wasn't able to get a hold of the ball nearly enough. The back line stepping forward because Jarrett was coming. Played on the ground by Anna Patton. Played with England. U-20 World Cup. These youth World Cups have sort of changed the nature of some of these off-seasons for these young players. Well, you gain so much experience in that. And, you know, it's, we talk about how tough the ACC is. It's especially tough on freshmen because of the physicality of this game. But when you've gone through a U-20 World Cup, that helps you gain that experience and deal with the type of pressure that you're going to get from ACC. That's why Patton has done well, and, and Howell, who, you know, freshman now, is, is doing extremely well growing into the game, and, you know, it helps to have that international experience. Yeah, we asked our Krikorian a little bit about it. He said, look at the schedule we played in non-conference. Are these freshmen ready for this level? We played Vanderbilt, who won the SEC, Florida, who were projected to win the SEC, UCLA, USC, and then the meet of the ACC. They feel like they prepared these freshmen for the opportunity to play in an ACC semifinal, or who knows, maybe be here in a month to play in College Cup. Virginia, pretty similar strength of schedule. Yeah, I mean, it's just, everybody wants to play these teams in, in their, you know, their non-conference schedule because they are so tough, and they know that these are gonna, these, both these teams will go far in the tournament, in the NCAA tournament. And so they, that's how they want to prepare. So, of course, because they already have the ACC, that stuff, and then the non-conference on top of it. So, you know, they, no time to rest. The season is short. You can't just line up an FCS team to pump a win out of the schedule. Ball dropped back and deflected straight off from McCool. Jarrett. And Castellanos on the ball. Virginia shot by number 22, Megan McCool. Farland out in front, but Zhao continues. Zhao pulled up and sought out Castellanos. Bounces down, Castellanos! Another highlight reel goal. She's chock full of them. Florida State levels it 1-1. One, one. Well, and that's the possession. 
that Coach Kikorian was talking about, possessing it in high areas in your attacking third area. And Cassianos, what a clinical finish. This is world class. Just to, even if it is a little ricochet, Lynch doing a nice job of beating her defender. When the defender does well to get back, but it just the deflection lands right her foot at Cassiano's oh, foot and too much time and space to give a player of her caliber that kind of time to look up, see where the goalkeeper is and just with a nice bent ball plays it into that far post. And she's got good dance moves as well, so. <laughs> We were told she's just so intelligent. FIFA brought her to the World Cup over the summer in Russia to promote the Women's World Cup as a journalist, which led Mark Krikorian to suggest that maybe Kat's job is on the line in the future, to which we responded, that's why we have a spare headset. Yeah, we have a spare, and she has way too much playing career in front of her, so <laughs> I'm going to be very old by the time she comes into the booth. So. I think I'll be long gone before she starts this career. That U-17 <laughs> World Cup half-field goal that she scored was up yeah. for FIFA goal of the year, which, you know, Carly Lloyd is up for that goal, not a U-17 player <laughs> at Florida State. And she was up for FIFA player of the year. Castellanos again. Castellanos is through. Castellanos save by Ivory. Oh, so much patience. A player with 19 goals last year just scored her eighth of the season moments ago. Wow, this was superb from Ivory. I'm all alone. Excellent play from Cassianos again. So difficult to defend because she keeps the ball so close. But quick off her line, not giving a good enough angle for Cassianos to, to finish that. And that's keeping Virginia in the game. And right now it's all Florida State. The adjustments that have really worked. And here they come again in transition. And this ball struck out of play untouched. That's a long run for Kirsten Havlisko. Yeah, and you knew she was gonna shoot. When you're making that run like that as a defender, <laughs> you're, uh, you're, you're thinking only one thing, and that's to shoot. And that's how I was, so I was like, she's not passing that ball to McFarland. She's going for it. <laughs> out of St. John's Country Day where she won four straight Florida titles and uh, established the school record for goals scored. She's got a little bit of you in her. <laughs> done there, done that. Tug at the jersey. It's Taryn Torres that got pulled down. Foul, Florida State. Well, with the hard defending that Virginia did in the first half, they've got to get back to that. And they've just given too much time, especially to a player like Cassiano. She got to make sure you know where she is. She cannot touch the ball as much as she has already in the second half. That header from 18 yards came with a decent clip of pace to it, but Wallinger has it. Morse the header, Morse the goal in the 43rd. Lynch is going to have to come off. Looks like there's uh, potentially some blood there on the nose. Yeah, it looks like it. Had a similar incident in the first game. Yeah. A little, little cut over the, uh, over the eyebrow. Lynch is the one who actually played that ball through to Castellanos earlier. see here she's so sophisticated she wants the ball earlier than that from Lynch on her right foot unfortunately it gets there and if Lynch had looked up earlier she would have had even more time and space to finish that just that was nice running there and just knowing exactly where she wants the ball to be played and the other one that Lynch played that was I mean like a like a hot knife through butter I mean it was just perfection yeah, they want her to get her, her leading dealt with so they can get her back on the field. She's been a great player for them. Believe it or not, she has one assist all season coming in. That's her second and should have had a third. Could have had a third. Not for Ivory. Tillman.
our coverage continues of the ACC Soccer Championship on Sunday, noon Eastern. It's North Carolina. And who's going to play in that second uh, half of that final? Well, we're no closer to finding out now than we were about two hours ago. Florida State or Virginia? Right now, Virginia needs to make some adjustments on the field. Florida State's had all the possession. They're getting the best opportunities. If it wasn't for Ivory, uh, it would absolutely be two to one. Oh, to the feet, Castellanos. The Venezuelan international. Patton goes back and collects. Back goes Kerner. And that's that direct ball. You know, the floor that Coach Kokoria was talking about, Florida State was holding the ball, passing along their back line. And if you play that long ball, put Virginia on their back foot, then you can start playing a little bit in front of them and in deeper positions on the field. And, and that's important for Florida State going forward because and, and, you don't want to possess just to possess. You want to possess in, in high positions and dangerous positions so you can just slip a ball in in that final third and get good goal scoring opportunities. Well, Ivory set to kick this away. You think to what Steve Swanson told us coming in, about the loss to Florida State, that those lessons that you learn are a little bit bigger when you come off a loss. There's a whistle run all the way back. And Lisko kicks it out. He told us that you think you don't win a game, that, that those lessons are more in focus and that those games help you get to this point. Virginia makes a change. Claire Constant comes on. Out of famed T.C. Williams High School. Get her whipped by McCool. Yeah, and she should have whipped it the other way because uh, that's where her teammates were. It's going to be hard for her to score from that angle. Well, they're still working over there. The thing about Virginia is they came in expecting that the Florida State staples would not change. And in the first half, they didn't seem very effective. Somehow out of halftime, th these have really hit home. A lot more ferocity than in the first half. Well, it's now the battle is being won in the midfield, and we talked about that in the open. How will the midfield of Virginia deal with the star power midfield of Florida State. And they're, they're, they're really getting eaten alive right now through the middle. And because they're not putting the pressure on Castellanos and Zhao and Howell, they're able to play balls and change the point of the attack quickly. And that's really what's hurting Virginia the most right now in the second half. Corner for Florida State here. Hey, stay on, stay on, here we go. Swinging in and cleared not too well. Carl sent the shot. Florida State shot by number 16, Gabby Carl. Zhao. Zhao from Carl. Swerving this ball in. Ivory. Grab it. Graduated a year early. Still a young goalkeeper. Arrived as a freshman. 17. And no one from Florida State seems too interested in slowing her progress. Yeah, she's been exceptional, exceptional today for Virginia. Some critical saves for them to keep this game at one to one.
behind McFarland. 43rd minute goal from Zoe Morse in her 60th career game, her third career goal. And then in the 50th, Dana Castellanos started a, a string of good Florida State opportunities with goal number 34 for Florida State career. Tied now fourth all time for the Seminoles. Long run here for Patton. McFarland ran into the same space. Well, it's interesting. I was watching Castellanos' movement and how it was making an excellent run. And if Castellanos had kept going forward, it could have been a 3v2, 3v3 situation for Florida State. But Castellanos kind of dropped back. So how was forced to go right and then a big miscommunication between her and McFarland. You seemed fairly interested in how you defend a player like Castellanos coming out of midfield. There's, there's certainly a lot of ways to go after that. Yeah, we have to know where she is all the time because of how good she is and, and smart she is with her runs. Zhao slips it ahead, McFarland. Goalkeeper is out, McFarland slicing it back to the penalty spot, and Virginia able to get it away. But she's so good at keeping the ball close to her feet, Castellanos. And this is Zhao as well, who's very difficult to defend, and McFarland just misses on the, the initial pass, but gets on the end of, of Ivory's deflection, just wasn't able to get enough on it to get it to her fellow players in the box. And yet again, Ivory comes up big for Virginia. For Virginia entering number six, Anna Sumter replacing number 10, Karen Torres. Also entering number 19, Ryan Azu replacing number 20. But the key with Cassiano, just to go back to that again, is because she keeps it so close to her, to her on the dribble, you have to make sure you constantly have cover as a defender. And so you have to be, and you have to be close on the cover. So if you take the first step and force a longer touch, that's when you want the second defender to come in and scoop up that ball. And that's what Virginia did extremely well in the first half. Uh, they've just struggled in the second half. McFarland checks out. Castellanos with her 1.2 million Instagram followers. We were remarking at that. I think you called her the Alex Morgan of Venezuela, so she has about that many callers too, maybe more. She's a soccer star, no doubt about that. An absolute star, and she gets kicked out from under. Clock is stopped. Whether this is a talking to or a card, all that remains to be seen. It should be a card. She got sandwiched. Yeah, no more is, is what the referee is going to go with. So McLaren doing a good job and just sandwiched there. Well, I, I like to know the talking to. Definitely a foul. But both of the players were involved in that tackle. Castellanos. Surely she's not going from here. She was. Well, I mean, she scored that half field, you know, so <laughs> that's nothing from 45 yards out or whatever it is. <laughs> well, those are the shots per game. There's uh, Russo and Castellanos and then Sam Coffey, who was up for Offensive Player of the Year. But, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty steep drop off. Yeah. Well, she was, you know, she's. I guess, you know, Coffee sets up people so well. She had so many goals and assists, so that was where she was dominant. Whether Russo is the best player in the conference is an argument I'm sure that can be made. Coffee had a wonderful year for Boston College, and it wouldn't have surprised anybody if she had been named Offensive Player of the Year, I think. Yeah, well, she got Midfield Player of the Year, so yeah. ju just as good to get that coming through the midfield and still getting so many points. and. So being so well balanced, and she's a big reason why Boston College did so well this year in the ACC and on the national stage. Yeah, their season is not over yet. And you know, their whole goal, can we get a home game before coming to carry? And they, they didn't make it to carry. Clemson knocked them off in Boston. That looked like it backfired on them. A, a little bit. <laughs> Ended up playing in some adverse weather conditions, suboptimal. Well, 
forklifted over the top by Howell. But, uh, they also wanted to try and make sure that they were in Newton for the first round of the NCAA tournament. I think they've got a pretty strong case for that. As the foul bringing down Spanstra, who was huge in the first maybe half an hour of this game. Yeah, she's dangerous because she, she likes to hold on to the ball and she's a creative player in the 1v1, trying to get in line, help her teammates. She just hasn't really connected nearly enough with McCool, with Torres, with Zandy and Sutton in the middle. And that's that needs to be the next step in these last 27 minutes or so to get them the ball a little bit more. It's been mainly a defensive effort right now from Virginia. They haven't gotten a lot in the attack in the second half. Well, they've come up with something off the set piece. It goes sailing perilously by. Brandon, the active leading goal scorer. Orzak in as well. Brandon had started 18 plus games each for the first three seasons and now splits time off the bench. Oh, and it looks like they've changed formation. She's come in and now they're playing what looks like could possibly a 4-4-2. Saw her t telling some orders to her team and maybe that'll help get a help get little more width for them and start playing around that Florida State back line. Oh, there's the ball through and a little shove from Spanstra enough to create some room to get onto the ball. Yeah, but I love that defending there from Patton. She didn't even go for the ball. She knew all she needed to do was use her body, not foul her, just get in the way and not allow for Spanter's run to continue. Patton's had a nice game. Yeah, she's solid back there. No advantage here. Dorsey got hacked. She was really solid for England, too, in the U-20 World Cup. Virginia. So. Wouldn't be surprised if she started getting some call-ups to the full team. Sent long by Berkeley for Dorsey. Brandon wants it back. And lost it. Jalen Howell. Remember that Real Colorado Academy youth setup. There are a couple of, of team names that are just synonymous with top level talent. The Lobos. Carl out in front. Well, oh, ricochets in. Florida State's got another. They've taken the lead, and it's the heroine again, Castellanos. And she just got bulldozed by one of her teammates. So I think she thought she was going to keep sliding on that celebration. But again, beating Virginia around the edges worked. It looks like Ivory got hit in the head pretty hard on when she made the initial save. Well done from Villalobos to find Florida. Carl running down the, getting to the end line. Excellent ball in. You can see the collision with Ivory. And unfortunately, it just bounces right to Cassiano's foot. As Dorsey was trying to make the, the run and her and Ivory bump into each other. And so watch this bulldoze right here from her teammate. Just <laughs> completely takes her out. <laughs> That's precious cargo, yeah. what are you doing? I know, maybe go a little bit easier in with the, the celebration. <laughs> Eighth goal, make it her ninth, come to think of it. That's her second of the game. Could, could have been a hat trick for her. Yeah. But that Ivory did, has done such an exceptional job. I hope that she's all right. Both teams are gonna head off to their benches for a moment. Now Ivory to get checked out and Castellanos. Hugs from everybody. Everything tied back up there. Castellanos came in with 13 game winning goals in her career and that would be 
third most in Florida State history. Looking for a 14th. Now sole possession of fourth place in Florida State's all-time scoring list. Their two goals today up to 35. And this is the slow motion. And Dorsey's knee just gets caught up on the back of Ivory's head. And no foul there. It's just an unfortunate collision. You hope that Ivory's all right. Kayla Moran is the backup, it's worth noting. Actually had to start the game against Colgate back on August 17th because Ivory was still at the Youth World Cup. Ivory's walking off here. And we'll see if she's just gonna go up to the referee and check back in here. Yeah, she's gonna go and continue on. The sophomore from Surfside in Florida who played for Miami Country Day, graduated a year early. And Moran, the freshman, who did play against Hofstra and Liberty and against Pitt. Well, the last 17 minutes have been mighty fruitful for Florida State. Six shots, two goals. Well, the adjustments at the, in the locker room for the second half have been obvious for Florida State. I mean, they have just dominated the second half completely. No waves this time, and it's just been clinical from Florida State, and from that, especially from that player right there, Castellanos. Wow, chance to get in behind. Ivory takes the punishment, and Dorsey denied. I have been so impressed with how quick Ivory is off of her line. I mean, the amount of grass she covers from that ball to, to where she makes the save. I mean, she just makes decisions so quick. And for a lot of goalkeepers, they wouldn't be coming off their line that high. They would have to, they would wait for the shot, but the decision was made early and she's been doing that all game long, even after that tough collision. She doesn't seem to be struggling at all. You know, during the game, uh, you know, lead up, we got a chance to talk with both coaches, as we usually do. And you kind of asked what you thought about Virginia of late. Mark Recording, the head coach for Florida State. He goes, I don't know, you tell me. You're kind of going one of the best coaches in, in, in women's soccer history, right? Is asking me what I think. Yeah, I'm like, I don't, like that's like, intimidating. You're like probing a little bit, like I, I think maybe. Yeah. I'm like, I hope I'm right. <laughs> Yeah. You passed the test. Yeah, thankfully. But, but I mean, this was a, a fill in the blank, yeah. not a multiple choice. Yeah. He didn't. I was like, that's a lot of pressure. I've got other people <laughs> listening to you. And, I mean, he is. He's one of the, both these coaches on the sideline are two of the best ever in college. And he's asking me my opinion. Yeah. So I appreciated it. I'm glad that I was close to being right, you know. <laughs> Whatever was figured out, yeah. clearly. It worked. Yeah, that's right. Oh. I would love to sit in a room with those two and just pick their brains on everything, just learning how to coach and X's and O's and everything. McLaren's gone into the book. She was, well, really cautioned that a yellow card was coming on a previous collision with Castellanos. So finally that's come to fruition. Player they feel can absolutely play at the next level. Other in a long line of impressive Defenders from Virginia. Flipped along, and this is Connolly involved. I think this is more an effort to settle this thing down. Connolly got shown a yellow, and I'm not sure there was really enough to warrant all that. Yeah, I'm not really sure either. Especially because she hadn't been given the warning like McLaren had. Well, two goals in 17 minutes, and Florida State has responded, coming out of the locker room down a goal. And now the impetus on Virginia and save their ACC tournament. An effort to take on North Carolina on Sunday. Yeah. 
subs coming. That is a caravan of Virginia players. Yeah, it's a line change. A lot of those players are starters. They just got a nice break from the game and they want to make sure to get some fresh legs out there because they're going to have to go after and press Florida State. They're going to have to regain some kind of possession and really put the pressure back on Florida State and their defense and just try and get a shot off and put some pressure on Bollinger and goal. Number 17, Rebecca Jarrett, replacing number 24, Alexis Spanstra. Number 20, Sydney Zandy, replacing number 19, Ayanna Zuri. Referee tugging in air. So what he felt happen there. It is a free kick to Virginia. Uh, everybody realizes, I think, now this is an ACC semifinal. If that was in question, this is no regular season matchup. 12 days ago feels like an eternity. Driven long off the head of McCool. And Moore should have called her off. She had a much better angle and could have hit it on frame at least. See Morris had a much better look at it, but McCool gets on the end of it. Not really sure. Oh, it looks like Howell's holding her right leg. This is a big player for Howell. I mean, for Florida State, the, how has the been biggest? Maybe I mean Castellanos, obviously, them. but yeah, I mean, yeah, one of them. I mean, the praise that she got was yeah. extensive. Player out of Fossil Ridge High School in Colorado, a finalist for Youth Player of the Year by U.S. Soccer. And what really came to me when and, and you see the head coach there in the background is Howell back to his feet Mark Akorian. You know, he said we have you know a staff here that kind of understands you know foreign styles of play and you know the way we possess the ball is, is sophisticated in its own right and, and she's been able to take these market improvements over three months we mentioned it in the first half but it's clear that, that she's playing chess when some freshmen would be playing checkers. Yeah, and you can see it on the field yeah, too. Yeah. She knows where to be uh, positionally, right, staying right in front of her two center backs, you know, stopping the passing lanes for those, those target boards to get to. And she swings the ball extremely well, changing the point of the attack. Uh, but she connects well with Castellanos and Zhao in the midfield. And, she has a great vision of the game, and that's kind of what you want from that, that six role, that defensive midfield role. And um, she's just been critical and a, and a difference maker for this team. And so you just hope that she's gonna be all right and be able to come back in or at least be, be healthy as the season continues. Put in play by Bollinger. No shots from Virginia in the last about 21 minutes. That's gonna need to change. Virginia's to make it to the ACC final on Sunday. Nobody knew where that went. Connelly will come off, playing on that yellow card. Casey Tillman comes back.
there's just not a lot of options for the center backs of Virginia. They're they're looking to try and play the midfielders. You just have to find those spaces just a little bit easier. easier. You know, Coach Swanson is hoping they can add to that goal scoring leader at the at the moment, but they're just they're not able to build up through the middle of the field as, as much as they're used to. And you want Sutton and Zandy to touch the ball a little bit more. And you, you have to trust in them too. You need to play them, play their back. You know, they're they're facing their own goal, but it's just been a good job from the midfield of Florida State to not really give a whole lot of options to build out of the back from the center back position of, of Virginia. Turned over to McCool, who's been quiet. Both number nines, the strikers, have been fairly quiet. McFarland to the other way, too. Well, Virginia. Headed away by Kerner. Substitution for Florida State entering number 20, Kristen McFarland, replacing number seven, McFarland Dallas. McFarland has returned. This has not been a game for her. Duke got the uh, game winner in Durham, Koskinen Stadium. Now Dorsey's done a nice job up there, actually. Almost got a goal, but Ivory coming off her line so well, wasn't able to, but they just haven't really found her too much. And you gotta you know, give a lot of credit to the center backs of Virginia, but she needs to find that space just a little bit better. Snipped out before McFarland could get on the ball. to pivot. Could this be the last two champions of the ACC meeting on Sunday, Florida State, North Carolina? Must we forget that North Carolina has lost 72 games ever, and eight were to Florida State more than any other program. That's quite the stat there. Only four teams have beaten North Carolina more than four times. This ball sliced in front. McCool, clever touch. Oh, no whistle. That was close, though. That was very, very close. And seemingly unnecessary, perhaps. Yeah, very unnecessary. Like Berkeley looked like she had plenty of, well, Bollinger had plenty of time, but Berkeley following her up, making sure she doesn't get near the ball. And good no call, but if she had extended that arm, just a little bit more. The referee would have had to really think about that. from Zhao. Carl, who moved from midfield to defender, not too far out of her comfort zone. Here's Zhao. It's been a lot of fun to watch on this night. And Zhao gets bumped into the byline and fires it off. Oh, it's a 
when ACC you, hashtags. Yeah, and you're getting a sense that Florida State's really trying to slow this game down. They really want to be methodical. Coach Gregorian uh, telling his team to just just be patient on the ball and, and make sure that you this is how you can, you're going to beat Virginia, not by playing too much defense. Your best defense right, right now is your possession. And if they want that sixth title, that's going to be the way to make it happen. Virginia's got other ideas. Well, it's a good sign, too, because Howell's back on the field for Florida State, so it's good that her injury wasn't too bad. That would have been a giant, giant loss for the final if that came to pass. Well, it's funny, when they have their arm over their head and they're just, you know, writhing in a lot of pain, you get so worried, and then they're back on the field just fine, so you... you you're happy for them, but you get you get worried for them as well because when it, you know, in the women's game, you know they don't roll 50 times before they they stop their their movement. <laughs> Not talking about anybody specifically at all. No. no Virginia's offensive drought now 25 Number minutes without a shot. It's been masterful from Florida State Sutton. in the second half. Number five, Lindsey Seraki, replacing number four, Hannah Turner. There is number an element of, I'd Sutton. love to see part three of this. Replacing number 25, Alyssa Gorzak. Yeah, for the number NCAA three. tournament? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'd buy that ticket yeah, today. Absolutely. It's just you, you feel. I don't think these two teams want to play no. each other again, but we'd love to watch it. <laughs> Thanks for falling on the sword for it. <laughs> yeah. We really appreciate it if you don't mind this entertaining soccer. Yeah. Anstra can't quite get through. Referee's got his eyes on this, so he says. Could have set piece, put Virginia over. They've struggled so much to get it going. It's been where the, they've been the most dangerous. They got the goal and got a couple of other opportunities off set pieces. Nice this long. That's a long run. It's back set towards Zhao. Slides it forward. Ricochets off of a do. And Karam's back to Morse, who's got the goal. He nearly unanimous captain. Junior for Virginia in the back. Of beating the first. This is a corner for UVA. And the effort of Rebecca Jarrett in the four. <laughs> Sister Grace, women's Cole. soccer over at Emory. I know that area quite well now. You do? Inside 10 minutes and a corner for the Cavaliers. Rising up, headed down by the goal line. I mean, this ref is quite whistle happy tonight. And I'm not really sure what this call was. I just, uh, I just don't see a foul in there at all. Just, it was a bunch of players going for it and 
No. I, went, I just wouldn't call it. <laughs> the, the header was off of Patton, too. Yeah, I know. I just, <laughs> that's why I'm so confused. <laughs> Could Florida, the number seven seed, the seventh ranked team in the country. Florida State. Beg your pardon. Yeah, watch out. Those <laughs> Seminoles don't like to be called Gators, you know. <laughs> Did I? Oh, oh, you said Florida. You just. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. I don't want you to get in trouble. Okay? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Tillman for the Seminoles. Ball through, it's in, McFarland. Is that their ticket punch to the final? It's 3-1 to Florida State. Well, we were talking about how she needed to find some space from those center backs. Well, she does an excellent job starting centrally, but then releasing to the outside and a sophisticated finish, sophisticated finish here from her and Tillman, who's been one of the best players for FSU tonight. Does a good job of forcing the center backs to make the decision to come to her and just giving McFarland acres of space. But what a great finish outside of her right foot, chips it over Ivory. And Ivory has been a tough person to beat today. And that was clinical on McFarland's part. So well done from her. Now that's gonna be really tough for Virginia. In eight minutes to score two goals. How about this, though? I mean, the ACC is so sacked that that one result at the end of the year drops a, a team from middle of the table and in the mix to host a, a first round game in the quarterfinals to number seven. You're going on the road to Duke, who had a fantastic year after losing so many great seniors. And they go get a goal from McFarland and then come here to carry and have a chance to knock off Virginia and take on North Carolina, a team that they fell one goal to zero in Tallahassee back in mid-September. I mean, the, Coach McCorian was said they're playing their best soccer right now, and what a time to be doing that. Uh, and they're showing it tonight against a very good Virginia team. And all due respect to him, they're playing their best soccer in the second half. Uh, yeah. This is them this at their is, absolute yeah, best. This has been clinical. Is this uh, for another Florida win for Mark Krikorian, another Dallas step replacing number 20. for an ACC Christine tournament championship. The three-year run ended last year. Entering number 26, Robert Sargent. Replacing number 22, Megan McCool. Well, if they can stay healthy, they have the pieces. I mean, the middle of the field is obvious with the, the youth of Zhao and Hao, but the experience of Cassianos. But then you have depth. You have extremely good winger play from Tillman and Lynch, and then other players coming in as well, and McFarland's playing really well but the defense is is also one of the best in the country so it's all there for florida state now they just can't have another miami where they have 25 shots and give up the one opportunity and they lose huh. well sometimes you gotta defend front to back Jarrett ran out of real estate. For Virginia, this is a team that Coach Swanson feels remarkably coachable, that they've gained a lot from the games they've lost. And it's a pretty balanced team in terms of class breakdown. And you would think there's still gonna be a threat in, in the NCAA tournament and that they could turn this ultimately into a positive in the long run. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're, you know, they were up on a, a, an incredible Florida State team that given up three goals in the second half. Coach Swanson can't like that. And you can see he's a bit frustrated. Him and his coaching staff are wondering what happened at this point. But this is a team that will do extremely well in the NCAA tournament. They have the pieces as well. Um, they just need to find more, of a, a little bit better of attack. Uh, they struggled today, garnering really a whole lot of opportunities. 
And a lot of that had to do with the fact that their midfield struggled. Uh, Torres just didn't touch the ball nearly enough. McCool as well. Uh, and for them to not touch the ball, that, that really hurts Virginia. Off to the corner for Florida State. Castellanos just just an incredible performance this ball floated and gets cleared away Gabby Carl swung that in Zhao. She's going to be a lot of fun to watch in the next three years. Yeah, she's, she's going to be a special player. And the development under Coach Gregorian and all of his coaching staff, it's going to be exciting to see how far she can go and really help not only Florida State, but also her national team. It'll be interesting to see how she continues on with the Chinese national team moving forward. Yeah, they, they used to be the one of the toughest countries to play, and now they're just really struggling uh, to even make the World Cup nowadays. And So they need more players like her coming up. To be fair, you, you look at the teams that were scrape in the bottom of the barrel 20 years ago in that in that region in, in AFC I mean the, the way New Zealand and Australia and you know Japan Japan you just never know what you're gonna get with North Korea right South Korea is doing better it's just it's been a it's been a lot of a lot of effort to to get to, for the women's game to do great things over there and I would not be surprised if you saw Australia at least in the in the yeah. semifinals I think they're a great team mm -hmm. they've got one of the best players who doesn't get enough recognition and Sam Kerr um, on their team and she just is well, still scoring Virginia. goals you know in her sleep probably because she's always scoring <laughs> she mm -hmm. quickest hat trick ever in the WSL and um, just a constant threat for any team she plays for. And then Europe, we're seeing some of these, that the lionesses are peppered all over the American collegiate landscape. Kame Bowl, how far do they go? How far does CONCACAF go? The South American, the, the North American, the, the Caribbean, Central America, those regions. I think that's, that's more the question. We're seeing things even up a little bit, right? In, in Asia and in Europe. Yeah, absolutely. Who knows, France could win something. Huh. It's something significant. Well, they got they, they got the pressures since it's in their country. So. Oh. Also got that weird dynamic of not having anybody to play because World Cup qualifying doesn't really affect them. Uh, yeah. It is it is kind of odd. I know that Canada struggled with that in the last World Cup because mm -hmm. they didn't play in the qualifying. Nice thing is for France, they have so many countries near closer to them than Canada did. So. <laughs> Well, this will run into the channel. Minute to go here. And Florida State pulling away from Virginia in the second half. It was 1-0 to Virginia after a 43rd minute goal from Morse. Uh, Castellano scores twice, the 50th and the 66th. McFarland seals the deal, it appears, in the 82nd. And Cat, this is going to be just a, a fantastic final ahead, Florida State and North Carolina. I think a lot of fans coming in would have loved to have seen that. Yeah, I mean, this Florida State team, the second half was excellent. Virginia just couldn't find a way through. They didn't get a whole lot of opportunities. Coach Swanson will be scratching his head a little bit, trying to figure out what happened in the second half. But he can pay a lot of tribute to the way Florida State played because of how good they were. So it's going to be interesting to see Florida State and North Carolina play in the final. And they've become accustomed to doing that since they did it a couple of years ago where Florida State won in penalty kicks. Well, that's it. Florida State will take on North Carolina. The seven seed is on to the ACC final on Sunday as they 
dismantle Virginia in the second half. Three nothing, and in totality, three goals to one. Yeah, and they deserved it. They were, uh, it was an even game pretty much in the first half, but really it was all Florida State in the second, and uh, Castellanos put on a clinic for scoring, and that whole midfield really just won out in the end. And that's the reason why they, they won three to one. Big night for Castellanos. Goals number eight and nine of the season. She's been quiet this year. <laughs> Not tonight she was, and look at that goal. Just opens up her hips, sees the far post open, and bends it in so well. And the end line, getting around the Virginia defense was key for Florida State. She gets a deflection and then just gets completely taken down by her teammate on that celebration. Might want to go a little more gentle when it comes to, to tackling after a goal, but they were all excited because they know how hard it is to beat Virginia. 3-1 winners, Mark Krikorian's side is on to the conference final, and the bracket would show that number seven seeded Florida State knockoff Virginia will take on the top seeded, undefeated, unblemished, 12 game winning streak, North Carolina. Cat, a lot of fun tonight, and I think Sunday, well, this is what we're looking at, noon, ESPNU, North Carolina, Florida State. We're going to do this whole thing again. It's going to be a great game. I'm excited to see who can recover quickly because it's a quick turnaround for both these teams. They both had hard fought battles. So it's going to be who can mentally get through that game, but also tactically and technically two of the best teams in the ACC. So for producer Rick Willensick and director Kyle Lang, our entire ESPN team and Cal Whitehill, Mike Watts saying so long from Wake Med Soccer Park. In Cary, North Carolina, Florida State 3, Virginia 1. They've advanced onto the ACC Women's Soccer Championship. Watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader of sports. Be careful, that's precious cargo. Florida State, North Carolina coming up Sunday. Good night.